Howdy guys, welcome back to Secret Mana Remake. I am Nintendo Capri Sun, but you already knew that. And I'm also Josh Jepson now, apparently. So, um... Ah, treasures. That's another thing I noticed in this game. A couple of things about treasure chests. Number one is they seem to appear a lot more often than they did in the original. And number two, they also don't seem to have traps usually as often... <laughs> usually? Why did I say usually? They don't seem to have traps as often as they did before, which thank god, you know, because that was so annoying. Honestly, it was. You know, and as I've gotten later into the game, I've started to see a few more of them. But I feel like... Like in the original, why were there so many traps early in the game and not later on? Why were they so much more frequent early in the game? You'd think they'd be more frequent later on, you know, because you're taking a chance. But hey, whatever, you know. Also, you can run. You just run forever. And you know, the, in the original now, when you would dash, it would basically just instantly consume all of your 100% and send it straight down to zero. And then you would get the dash until you bumped into a wall. You could dash, like, diagonally in the same direction you were going, but, you know, it's still, you couldn't turn with it. And in this one, not only can you dash for what seems like forever, but look how slow my percentage goes down as I dash. You could basically dash for, like, 30 seconds. Also, I didn't mean to leave there. Yeah, some songs like this one don't really seem to have been changed as much. And then there's other ones that just, like, totally... definitely got changed. <laughs> Part of me wants to say hacked to pieces, but I feel like I'm, like, sensationalizing a bit there. Embellishing, exaggerating, yeah, there we go. What do you need a word like sensationalizing for when exaggerating would do just fine? This is Pandora Castle. Yes, it is. Yeah, sometimes you just have to stop and look at the atmosphere a little bit here. Like, look how nice this looks. Look at the floor, too. Why are there people near the entrance to the southern ruins wearing strange masks? I don't know, Rydia. The Empire attacked us once about 15 years ago. That they did. What a weird combination. Purple and green. Purple shirt, green vest, purple pants, green shoes, and look at how he's walking. <laughs> he looks like one of those toy robots. Okay, I'm just making fun now. Did you know there's an enormous tree called a mana tree? That's what they tell me. People like purple around here, don't they? When's Silent coming back? He promised he'd play with me. Aw. Gotta make Dialuck a likable guy, you know, by showing that he loves kids. The souls of the townspeople have been sucked up by that witch up north. Wow, alarmist. Of course, I guess you have to be in a world like this. Oh, this is the end. Our kingdom has been cursed by the witch. Well, somebody needs to go kick that witch's ass, then, don't they? Something evil lives in the ruins in the south. Is it you? <laughs> Have you heard? Sir Elman planned an arranged marriage for his daughter. They should be upstairs now. Oh, well, lucky her, I guess. Who's the daughter? Let me guess. My dad is infuriating. I am in charge of my life, not him. You're that dummy I saved earlier. <laughs> Sorry about before. Huh. Is that a sword? I didn't know you were a swordsman. Yeah, that's right. What, this? No, I'm actually... This is perfect. Now's your chance to pay me back for saving you. I need your help. We need to teach that witch a lesson. We're going to save Dylock. But I have to go to the underground palace. Save that for later. Come on, let's go. Um, whatever your name is. What's your name? Oh, you can call me. Alright then. Yeah, now we have two party members. So now I can actually show this a little better. It's pretty much the same as before. You use Y to bring up your own ring menu. And then if you want to bring up the partner's menu, you press X. Notice how the border is green. I mean, green. Hello. Uh, notice how it's pink. Now it's blue. Now it's pink. Now it's blue. That's how you tell whose ring you're on. I'm not sure why... The Polygon review missed that, but there you go. <laughs> That's what you get for writing a review two hours after the game comes out, you know? Of course, I'm doing the same thing practically, so... Dash around a little more here. Okay, I will say that her hair sort of annoys me a little bit. 
Like, it's kind of flat. You know, like in the original, it seemed more poofy. Now it just seems like a flat piece of paper almost, but eh, whatever. It's probably just easier to render it that way. So now that you have Prim in your party, you can do a couple of things. You can try to, you know, like, take her to Guy's navel, you know, anyway, even though you agreed to, like, help her out first. But, um, if you do that, she's gonna turn around and say, wait, we're not supposed to go this way, we're supposed to be going and say, you know, face the witch. And, um... And then at that point, you'll have the option to, like, just basically let her leave your party. At which point, next time you see her after that would be the same as if you'd never met her at the castle at all. Is that like a siren going off outside? I don't know what that is, but... That definitely sounds like a siren. Huh. Jeez, you open your windows for two seconds and what do you get? Noise! 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 No wonder everybody stays inside so much these days. Talking about gamers, y'all need to stop playing old video games and get outside. You go outside and what is that? Noise. Noise. Whatever. Noise and overpopulation. And now there's a train. Actually, that might be the train that was making the noise before. Why am I talking about that? Hey. So yeah, now now that the now that Prim is in your party, you can see she's got her weapons there. It looks really cool. You know what? I'm gonna wait for that to pass by. I'm not gonna make you listen to that. Okay, well, it seems to have calmed down a little bit out there, so... Ah, uh, yeah. She just moves in right for the attack. The AI does seem a little bit different in this one. Of course it would be, but... Huh. The AI wasn't exactly one of the standout features of the original, if we're being honest here. And it's like, people are so quick to jump on the remake and say, Oh, this sucks! Now I'm worried about Final Fantasy VII! You know what? Final Fantasy VII is gonna be just fine. And so is this one, once the backlash, you know, moves out. We've seen so much of this lately, though. It's like, ever since Breath of the Wild, now it seems like people aren't allowed to like a game anymore because, oh, well, now every game's perfect. I, I guess that's not true, though. I mean, everybody seems to like Celeste, and that's a good game. So maybe I'm just overgeneralizing here. I'm just trying to say something that sounds fancy that's not really true. But, uh... Yeah, I've noticed, um... In the original, there was this thing where when you would hit monsters, while they were stunned, sometimes you wouldn't see the damage number right away. It's kind of interesting how they managed to keep that in. But see there, how I hit the flower, he was already dead. In the original, the flower would have just disappeared right when he died, so I wouldn't have done that. And I would have wasted that hit. But hey, you know. It's just a small thing. It's not that big a deal. Whoa, whoa, stay away from that. Stay away from those AoEs, man, I tell you what. I like that you can at least still hit two monsters with one swing, because if they had taken that away, that would have been shitty. If that's what... You know, that's a Final Fantasy thing. One of the things that I loved about this game from the beginning was that it was like Final Fantasy and Zelda mixed together. Because you were actually contributing to the action, you know, you had to actually be good at moving around and maneuvering. And I find myself doing a lot of the same things in the remake that I did in the original when I attack monsters. I'll usually circle around behind them and hit them from behind. Or just try to stay out of their... And, and I don't think it matters, like, which direction you hit them from, or, like, which, where you stand. That's probably just, like, leftover habits from Final Fantasy XIV or something, but... But I do like to kind of stay to the sides or behind them, so it feels safer there. <laughs> Even if it really isn't. It's just something I've always done. So over here we have Kippo Village. Or I think it's actually Kipo Village. This is Kipo Village. Yeah, see there? I'm not sure how much money I have on me at the moment, but I'm not even gonna check though. Because I'm pretty sure I have enough. <laughs> Welcome. So glad they kept the dance. It's not the same dance, but it didn't have to be. Oh wow, I got plenty of money. So I'm gonna get the Kung Fu dress for her. I'm gonna grab the chain vest for myself. I had just enough money for that. Holy oh, crap. Come again. And so once again, in the menu screen, blue is me. And we're gonna put that on and get some really good defense there. And then you can, right here, you know, when you're equipping, you can actually just jump right from one character to the next by pressing triangle. Or whatever button that tells you. It says it right at the bottom there, so... 
But that's kind of nice, you know, you couldn't do that in the original. In the original, you had to go all the way out to their menu and then go in and equip it from their menu. Once again, pink is her, blue is me. <laughs> I don't know why I feel I need to keep pointing that out, I'm just... I just can't believe I didn't notice that sooner. Stop by Dad's store later, okay? Two steps ahead of you, kiddo. Okay, here's something else I, I don't have enough money to do it, though. One of the greatest improvements to the game, by far, and I haven't even shown it yet. And I'm gonna need to get some money to show it. Fortunately, flowers, I believe, drop 7 GP. I don't know if, like, all the... You know, if, if all the monsters are worth the same experience that they were before. I haven't really bothered to try to check it out. There you go. The monsters do have a certain animation that's different from their getting knocked back animation to their dying animation. So if you watch for that, you can tell that the monsters are dead, but you have to get to know the animations is all. So that's a little different, but I guess that's kind of cool. Um, so here's the thing now, when you say it in N, sometimes you'll actually get a cutscene before your characters go to sleep. Which I think is awesome. Here we go. You had to see my dad and me get into a fight. Not my best moment. Though, now that I think about it, I've seen you look pretty lame yourself. <laughs> what do you mean? Remember when those goblins were gonna slice you up and eat you for dinner? They took you down so easily. H hey, I was ambushed, okay? Oh, yes, I'm sure. Because a real swordsman would never be caught off guard by a simple goblin. Don't worry, I'll keep your secret. But in return, you have to help me. I'm counting on you. Look, I already told you that I need to get to the underground palace. And I told you this is a matter of life and death. We need to stop the witch in the north. Who knows what she might have done to Dylock and his men. Well, when you put it that way... If you won't go with me, I won't waste my time looking for your silly palace. You want to split ways here? You were the one who decided to join me in the first place. Quit splitting hair. I don't know, I just like that. It's like little character building, you know? It gets even better when the sprite joins. Holy crap. It's just ridiculous. And quite awesome. So yeah, save the game, sure. Alright, let's get out of here. So what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and go to the, um... Or at least try to go to the witch's castle. Obviously, if you try to go there, it's gonna block you. With you're gonna you're gonna see that you won't be able to get there. And when she realizes that, she'll stay with you in Guy's name. Will. But you have to actually go to her place first in order for her to realize that. And the flowers have 36 HP, so if you're really good at math, you can already tell when they're dead. And before you know it, you'll be one-shotting them anyway, so it doesn't even matter. Also, I could be dashing here. Whoa! Easy does it. <laughs> oh yeah, leftover dashing there caused me to hit for really low. There you are. Nice! Love those critical hits. Okay, so, um, be careful in the Lost Woods here because this is actually pretty dangerous. Whereas in the original- oh yeah, look at that, holy crap, that's what the Kung Fu dress- oh jeez, I'm dead already, or she's dead. I'm gonna try and see if I can get there. Because it's not actually that far. But yeah, you could really get your ass nuked in here real quick. Um. Because in the original, the guys could only fire in four directions, so it was easy enough to kind of dodge around them. Something sharp, like an axe. Otherwise, we'll never get through. There's supposed to be a dwarf blacksmith in Gaia's navel. He's probably got some good weapons. Fine, we can go to Gaia's navel first. There you go. I'm not gonna bother fighting these guys because she won't gain any experience for it. So let's just get out of here. Oh. Yeah, but when they can fire in 360 directions, it definitely makes them a little more dangerous than they were before. Can't believe they haven't hit me yet. 
Ooh, there we go. Okay, we're fine. So if there's no cutscene, you know, for you, if you haven't unlocked a cutscene, then it's just gonna go straight to bed and it won't show you one. Because there's only cutscenes for, like, certain stuff that happens in the game. But what can happen is if you go through a bunch of stuff without saying it in, then you can watch several cutscenes in a row if you want to. So, because so, I did that once, I actually stayed in an inn twice in a row and I got two cutscenes. So it's kind of funny. But it's because I hadn't stayed in an inn in a while and stuff had happened in the game, so. You know. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip out of the inn on these guys here. I want to try to kill the flowers more than anything else because they definitely drop the most gold. I believe it's in the original, they drop seven gold. Which is more than basically anything else at this point in the game, so. The more you kill, the more gold you get, the richer you get, the more armor you can buy. Mushrooms are a little different, they're better for experience, but they also take a long time to kill, so it's kind of, well, <laughs> tit for tat, you know? Did I just say tit? Am I gonna get banned on YouTube for that? I'm really ready to get my sword upgraded here, so I could be doing a little more damage here. It's kind of tedious. Yeah, going through the guy's naval cave is not exactly a picnic the first time, and it, it wasn't a picnic in the original either, to be sure. I don't know, probably get this guy. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell on this song more so than a lot of the others. That stuff, a lot of stuff got changed up, like a lot of stuff got really rearranged. It reminds me of the way Plants vs. Zombies 2, the way they changed the music in that game. Do you remember in the original, it was kind of like... You know, when, I, when I say in the original, I'm talking about both Plants vs. Zombies and Secret Mana a little bit here. In the original, it sounded more organic. And kind of lush, and that kind of thing. Whereas in the remakes, it sounds more sort of tinny and electronic and... All, all, all around bizarre. But... Still, I think the more you hear it, the more you listen to it, the more you kind of get used to it. Because there are a couple of moments in certain songs where it sounds a little too busy. But it's another one of those things where, like, the first time you hear it, you're gonna think, holy shit, what's going on here? And then as you, as you kind of acclimate, you know, to the music a little bit, it starts to become more familiar when you're expecting it. Especially when you have stuff where something where one part of the music is playing in three quarter time and the others in four quarter time, but they still line up because three and four is like the add up to well they both multiply out to twelve you know the mamas and the papas do that all the time if you go and listen to the song uh, what is it make your own kind of music and get to the part where she sings even if nobody else sings along she's doing it there. Just singing in three quarters while the music is still playing four quarters. I guess Rush does that a lot too. But again, Rush is one of those bands where a lot of times you have to hear their songs numerous times to really fully digest them, I guess. Oh, oh there's a treasure. Oh, there's a bomb. Holy crap. <laughs> now I just got done saying that you don't see those as often in this game. The treasure chest was kind of walking around there. Sometimes when they do that, it means it's a trap, so I don't know if that's always the case. Yeah, I think it is. I think the treasures are killing us more than the monsters are in this game, I'll tell you. Maybe I just had a lucky run last night, because I'll tell you, it sure wasn't doing that last night. But hey. I also love the way the slimes look in this. They look like they don't belong in this at all, like they don't belong in the cave. But, to be fair, that's how they looked in the original, too. <laughs> it's so easy to forget, you know, that the original was weird, too. The original had a lot of stuff that just seemed to be really out of place, and that's why it was so charming. Because you just never knew what to expect. And now when you know what to expect, and you don't have that sort of... You don't have that to look forward to anymore, because you already know what's coming. 
I think that does take away from the experience a little bit. See, these guys, what happens is when you hit them, they just fall on their back. But when, when they're dead, they fall on their stomach. So... See there? Boom. So that's how you can tell when they're dead before they actually disappear. Ooh. Here comes the Blat. Yes, they still cast Balloon, just like they did before, so... Whatever. It's worth it to take your time and just kill everything you see in here. Because stuff will start to ramp up a little bit. As far as, like, magic goes, uh, well, well, <laughs> we'll touch on that subject a little more later. It's definitely a little more awkward to, um, to chain magic than it was in the original. But at the same time, I kind of want to almost say, well, good. Because magic completely broke the first game. In the original, you could just nuke any boss you wanted to and do all 999 damage for nothing, you know, just for chaining a spell over and over again, which took no effort whatsoever. And the way the menus work in this game, it's a little bit... I don't know if I've actually worked it out totally yet, like, how fast you could do stuff. Because in the original, you know, there was that whole thing where, well, you just waited for the elemental animation to finish, wait till the elemental disappeared, and then you could bring up the menu and just cast the spell again. So I haven't really figured out what the exact point is in this game, where you can start casting a spell again. Oh, I can't get between there. So, but it seems more like you have to actually wait for the spell itself, the animation of the spell itself to finish before you can cast it again, rather than just casting it right after the elemental disappears. And if that's the case, then, I mean, good. Because then that means you can't break the game the way you could before. Because even though I loved doing that in the original, I mean, it was... did kind of make it a little unfair. So, and for what it's worth, it does seem like, of the bosses that I've faced so far, they do seem to have toned them down a little bit. Some of them seem to have, like, a little bit less HP. But once again, I might just be... It might just seem that way to me, because I've been taking my time and gaining more experience than I normally would. Oh, I said that before. But it just bears repeating, because... Sometimes I don't really know why. My experience is going a certain way when it does. And if I can figure out why, then I can kind of explain that to you. So I'm not leaving it for you to say, well, the reason that the bosses are so easy is because you're gaining all this experience. <laughs> Which would be true. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, though. I mean, this game looks great. I hate to say it. But it does. Okay, there is one small thing. Um in the original that it doesn't do here, and so you really have to be paying attention to the sound a little more than usual. In the original, when you got up to 100%, your character would kind of flash white when you got to 100%. And now it doesn't do that. So all you really have to go on is the sound that it makes. It makes a little dee when you get up to 100%. And so you can still tell when you're full. Holy crap, wow. It's the first time he's done that to me. <laughs> Oh, you can also switch characters by pressing right on the D-pad. That's on the PS4 version, I don't know about Steam or whatever. People were telling me I should have gotten this on Steam, but man, I don't know, maybe. I don't know, I just wanted to play it on the big TV, man. Oh man! Punch glove all up in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and kinda like try to hurry through the rest of this a little bit. So I want to go ahead and get the sprite in my party, so that he can be gaining experience along with us. And I'm just going to be referring to it as a he. I don't really know. There's been a lot of people saying, oh, the sprite is a they in the remake. I don't think it was ever truly specified what gender he was in the original. But there is at least one point in this game where it says he. It's only once, but it does happen, and it's like right when you first meet him. So, and I've always called him a he before, so that's probably what I'm going to continue to call him. Him, <laughs> you know. But it's crazy, because, when, man, when you meet this character, it totally looks like a girl. The hair is fashioned like a girl, he's got like the little bangs hanging down. I guess some people have said he's like a transgender, sort of like Vivian. 
so I guess there could be that. Oh, uh, we could get some more armor here, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm actually going to go ahead and hit up the end. And we will do what we need to do here tomorrow. One night is Sure, why not? Sorry for cutting you off there. So we still haven't unlocked any cutscenes yet. I think it's usually like when you beat a boss, that's what unlocks the cutscene. I'm not totally sure. Anyway, God, I feel like there's so much I wanted to say about this, and I don't even know if I've touched on half of it at this point. I know when I go back and edit this, it's going to be driving me crazy, like, oh, I should have said this, or whatever. Anyway, well, thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you again real soon. Take care.